Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Art Talk. My name is Bethany and today we are going to have a little chat about something that I hear a lot whenever I am giving a workshop or teaching my lessons online, even here on my YouTube channel. And that is when artists come to me and say, my paintings aren't good enough. What do I do about that? Well, for one thing, it is really important to define what you exactly mean by your paintings not being good enough. A lot of times we are comparing our work to another artist in that statement, and I really want to caution you about, of course, the evils of comparison. Learning any new skill is difficult, and if you have been practicing for a while with pastels or oils or acrylic or watercolor, whatever your chosen medium is, we're, we're trying really hard at our easel to not only employ the artistic side of ourselves, but also the technical aspects of painting, choosing colors, having good values, having edge work, connecting our shapes, having a pleasing composition. There are so many elements that go into kind of the magic of a painting coming together. We're trying so hard to learn and we're also trying really hard to discover our styles, to be unique, and to set ourselves apart. If you are achievement oriented, maybe you're trying to get into an exhibit that is really prestigious, or maybe into your local exhibit with your friends and your peers. Maybe you really just want to prove to people that you aren't just wasting your time and your money. Now, I'm not really describing a fictitious person. I'm describing myself in my art practice. I have felt all of those things and more so many times where I'm striving too hard. I've mentioned that before in past art talks here where I don't want to paint or I'm struggling in the studio. Everything is just not going well and I'm not having fun anymore. And that really is the kicker right there. Where is your joy? What are your goals? Goals are really, really good. I'm not telling you not to have goals to achieve, to get into that show, to hang on a wall in a gallery that you really admire. All of those things are kind of the world's way of proving that we are a success. Success means different things to different people and someone else's idea of a success really may be influencing you a little too much when you are in your practice. We can't look at someone else's output and judge our own because their journey is uniquely their own. Once again, it has not helped the feelings of failure when social media likes to really show us exactly how many likes or how many comments, how many people are following another artist. Those things can either be really encouraging or they can kind of be demoralizing. I hope I'm not the only one that has ever posted something or shared something with a friend that I thought was gonna get a really good reaction and then it kind of just fell flat. Maybe nobody responded. Maybe you didn't get any likes. Maybe somebody even said something negative or you had some constructive criticism that was not very helpful and was more hurtful than anything. Maybe you've even had some teachers in the past that have kind of beaten you down a little bit and made you feel like you weren't worthy and you just really didn't have what it takes. As an artist teacher, I really, really try to be very, very careful in my critique and in my way of helping people because a teacher can really make or break our attitudes about art and it is such a precious commodity that we have. And whenever we have an artist that is really, really giving a lot and trying a lot, our job is to encourage them and not destroy them.
I've said before in my past workshops and to my students that Julia Cameron's wonderful book, The Artist's Way, which is something that I fall back to um, occasionally and especially if I'm going through kind of an emotional or a turbulent time, I love how she talks about allowing yourself to be a beginner at something and how as humans, sometimes we don't give ourselves grace to allow ourselves to be bad at something or to learn. We wouldn't yell at a little toddler because they don't know how to walk. We don't yell at them and tell them, gosh, you are terrible at walking. You shouldn't even try. Of course we don't do that. When we have a toddler that takes its first step, it's a cause for celebration. And I just want to help you remember to celebrate your little successes. Allowing yourself to be bad at something or to be a beginner at something is a really freeing mindset to have whenever you're approaching your easel. Whenever you decide, today's the day, I'm gonna paint. Try to change your mindset to be more about the process, to celebrate yourself and celebrate the joy of painting in the first place. Another aspect of this coin, another side I guess I should say, is I do have a lot of students that are kind of paralyzed by approaching the easel and so they love to watch paintings, maybe here on YouTube, they like to read about art, they like to look at art, but then they're terrified to pick up a brush or pick up a pastel to, to apply their own hand to it. Or maybe it's that you're trying too hard to paint like someone else. And that's another problem with a lot of, especially these videos, uh, not just from me, but from many different artists, is that we like an artist, we like how they paint, but remember, their vision is not your vision. And so sometimes those can get kind of muddled together to where your true vision, your own personal magic is being diluted because you're trying too hard to go in a different direction. If you haven't yet followed or listened to or watched or read artist Ian Roberts and his gorgeous paintings all about composition, he also has one of my very favorite art books called Creative Authenticity. And it is such a fabulous, fabulous book to encourage and kind of just to be a friend to you in your studio and in your practice. I'm going to read to you a little excerpt from his book, Creative Authenticity, 16 Principles to Clarify and Deepen Your Artistic Vision. And this is what he has to say. As artists, there's work we create that simply doesn't come together. And for each of us, there's only one solution to this problem. We just have to continue to make paintings and more paintings. And then for no particular reason, all of a sudden we start to click and all the pieces that we've been working with, the direction we've been perceiving as if through a glass darkly is now open and clear in all its glory. We paint and everything falls into place. This is such an encouragement to me and I really hope it is an encouragement to you to keep painting and keep practicing. Find joy in those little successes that you have. Fall back on what you know and don't let the fear of failure or of a bad painting keep you from doing what, what brought you joy in the first place. So we have a few takeaways today after our little art talk. Make sure that you are making time at your easel as much as you possibly can. We can't only ever just rely on when we feel inspired. If I only ever relied on when I feel inspired to paint, I might not be painting as much as I do. Daily practice or weekly practice as much as you can 
will really help you put in those painting miles to where the successes will come more frequently and those bad paintings we can just chalk up to a learning experience at the easel. Try to make smaller achievable goals for yourself. Sometimes that could just be today or this week, I'm really gonna focus only on my tree shapes. Maybe you're going to really try to have stronger values in your work or work on your mark making, your touch, how softly or how hard you're pressing on the paper. All of these things, when you start to combine them over time, will help you have a more successful piece. Also, try to keep a sense of humor and a pragmatic attitude towards exhibits and gallery shows, juried exhibits. All of those are so subjective and they don't necessarily mean you are a good or a bad painter. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me. I'm your art friend and your art encourager, and I just want you to have joy and peace in your painting practice. Thank you so, so much. I'll see you soon.